have been uh, writing for several decades now about your concerns about the uh, stability of our government in the face of crisis, whether it's um, a terrorist attack, whether it's a, uh, a, a public health threat, whether it's anthrax or now the coronavirus. And the question that you've asked is, can our government continue to operate in the face of a catastrophic event? And the answer is no. And that's true for all three branches. And it became uh, particularly and starkly evident in the aftermath of 9-11. We don't want to be in a situation, especially in the midst of a crisis, whether it's a terrorist attack or a natural disaster or a pandemic or whatever else it might be, where we can't count on the three branches being there and working and making sure we have those checks and balances in place. And I started doing this in uh, earnest in the immediate aftermath of 9-11. We created a commission uh, on the continuity of government, co-chaired by the late Lloyd Cutler, who was a White House counsel under two presidents, and former Senator Alan Simpson of Wyoming, another one I've worked closely with uh, many things and who's one of my heroes in public service. And we tried to get Congress to do something to create emergency interim appointments in the event that an attack wiped out a majority of the members, because you can't operate if you don't have a quorum of half the members, uh, to create uh, emergency interim appointments for those who are incapacitated, uh, because the Senate can't operate uh, without that quorum. And uh, the anthrax scare made that apparent. But also, the Presidential Succession Act of 1947 is inadequate for the task. And the Supreme Court has no plan if they fall below the statutory quorum of six. And you don't want to be in a position where vital issues, uh, including a presidential succession, uh, that you don't have a court who can make sure that it's being done the right way.